Bossard ram scoops are part of the standard equipment of Starfleet vessels from the 2270s onwards. This means that despite the appearance of the Constitution class, it did not actually have them, although I'm not too sure about that statement as I have seen them referred to as Bossard collectors in other media before. Anyway, they sit at the front of the nacelles but are not part of the warp system, at least not directly, but they do act to facilitate shipwide power. The purpose of these is to collect interstellar gases and particles that can be used as fuel for the starship. The original plans for such a device are credited to the physicist Robert W. Bussard who came up with the notion of the Bussard ramjet which would collect interstellar hydrogen in an ionised state through the emitting of magnetic fields to funnel the particles into the ramjet. That can then be used as fuel for fusion reactors and apparently it took some time to generate a worthwhile device based on this theoretical design in Star Trek. Perhaps the gains were not enough to warrant their installation. They generate a field of directional ionising radiation which creates the magnetic field to pull in the gases that they need and they glow when in use, most often a red or orange. The amount of gases collected in this way is generally negligible when travelling at impulse speeds through the vacuum of space but with the sheer distance traversed a ship is going to sweep up a decent amount in time. In addition to this, a vessel can always set a course for a hydrogen or deuterium rich cloud or nebula and bathe in the gases to refill depleted reserves. While the real life Bussard ram scoops would collect hydrogen, it is entirely possible that the ones of a Starfleet ship intake a different form of exotic particle, but even hydrogen would work. Starship fuel, and after all is deuterium, and stored in a massive reserve within the engineering sections of a vessel. Within the starship, hydrogen can be refined into deuterium and anti-deuterium and fed into the warp reactor for your standard matter-antimatter reaction. The whole process is not as efficient as simply resupplying at a station or dock, and the ram scoops act more to supplement reserves or act as an emergency method of fuel intake, should a ship lose its deuterium. After their implementation is standard, the design continued to be worked on with alterations made to the system. For example, the Sovereign class was one of the first vessels to have independent storage tanks for the collected gases built into the nacelles, while the Galaxy class would have collected and refined the hydrogen as it went, adding anything required to the deuterium reserves instead. However, there is one major drawback on the ram scoops. They conflict with another primary system, that being the deflector shields. The deflectors are designed to do just that, push away particles from the vessel that would otherwise collide with it at near luminal or faster than light speeds, causing hull damage. This means that in order to use the Bussard ram scoops, the deflector needs to be either inactive or carefully calibrated to make way for the collectors or the hydrogen that they wish to harvest. This made it far less practical at warp speeds, however, when you need the deflectors to be operational, otherwise the first speck of interstellar dust is going to smash through something the minute it hits the ship. The ram scoops too can have their intakes reversed and simply eject the contents back into space. This has been used as a means to deliver hydrogen and in the case of the Riker manoeuvre, a ship with a dedicated storage tank can be used to deliver all sorts of other compounds that could otherwise be collected. That is about all there is to say on ram scoops. We don't have an exact date of implementation on Star Trek, but I was surprised to learn that the Constitution class originally did not have them. Or did it because of the age of this theory it seems that such a system would have been rather easy to implement so I doubt it was a technological limitation. Thanks for watching. I've been Rick, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.